Hey, this is Tonight Alive, and this is part two of our fan interview on Pure Volume. <laughs> Anna would like to know if we had to compete in any Olympic sport for a day, what would we choose and why? Ah. Uh, what, what Olympic sport? Olympic sport. Ping pong. Ping pong would be a great sport. Um, I would do. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I would do. It's an Olympic sport. Anything on track and field. Yeah, track and field. I would, would do be mountain cool. bike riding. Is that that's an Olympic sport? I swear it is. I swear it is. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I would like to do gymnastics. I always wanted to do oh, yeah, gym dude. in school. Yeah. I wasn't. I just didn't really get into it. I guess I was a bit of one of the music nerds, really. So I never did the physical stuff at school. But looking uh, back, I would have loved to. Get soccer. Into that. Soccer or seven aside rugby. Rugby, yeah. Seven, mm. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Good call. I, okay. Why did I say ping pong? We say that back. Roll, 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 or roll? Call. I'm not uh, sure. Uh, it it could be either, either one. Uh, drawing inspiration from our album title, what are you guys scared of, and what are your phobias? If we want to talk about what the album, you know, why we chose what he's so scared of is sort of the topic was, I think it was a fear of um, failure or a fear of judgment really. Like the whole message is about not living in the fear of someone else's judgment or opinion or letting that restrict you or hold you back and, and even the way that we can hold ourselves back because of insecurities. So I guess that might, might not be called a phobia but I think that was definitely where the album title and the album message was inspired by. What about animal phobias? Or I hate snakes and spiders. Yeah, me too and I hate zombies. Yeah, I hate like graphic, <laughs> graphic like death, hate graphic m murder, like anything with paranormal swords activity freaks me out. You hate? That, oh my god, that is definitely phobia. I hate paranormal, yeah, spirits yeah. like demons Ghosts, that yeah. freaks with me. <laughs> but coming back to, I guess what what he's so scared of is about is what Jenna said, and definitely uh, for us because we this is our whole life being in a band and um, making this career, and, and it's so much work. Um, there's definitely, like, I guess a fear of this failing, but I guess the whole point of the the message it's is to, to not, yes, yeah, yeah. overcome that and to not let that kind of encumber what what you're trying to do. Mm. All right, uh, Natalie Parham, why did you guys decide to use escalators on the album cover? Um, this is something that spawned actually from Cameron. Um, he found a picture on the internet that. We were talking about album art, and he showed me the image, and I was like, "Oh my god, this, this is it. This is the, this is the image." And um, it was actually quite similar to where we went with the album sort of direction. Um, I guess we wanted to represent duality. We wanted to represent direction, moving from one place to another. Particularly, it looks kind of like coming out of a train station, so coming from the dark and into the light. I think the album really talks about perspective and the challenges we went through in the two years of the writing process. So. Uh, yeah, we, we just wanted to represent movement and development and growth and... And the idea that yeah. there's not, there's another side, like, I guess the album's called The Other Side, but there's always, even if you feel like you're in a dark place, there's always, you know, a kind of white to your black, in the sense, like a yin and yang. Black, yeah. yeah. Which was... is definitely in the whole, throughout the whole album. Nice. Cool. Eileen Addison, it's so cool to see another strong female fronted band on the scene. Jenna, do you think female musicians are still underrepresented in the Warp Tour world? Um, I don't think so as much in the Warp Tour world. I mm. think Warped really, um, <coughs> even if, this year, there, yeah. I think there were like maybe five or six um, female artists on the if tour. Any tour maybe, it's gonna be Warped Tour that has that. I think it's the most open and sort of diverse lineup. I think there's yeah. a, lot, a lot more women um, coming through. Uh, the industry, which is which is great. Um, yeah, I don't think it's a, definitely like a weird thing anymore. I think maybe five years ago, maybe it was. Um, we we had to talk about that a lot in interviews, and sort of it was a massive topic of conversation, being female fronted and everything. But um, it seems weird that that would even be something that's questioned. But yeah, I, I'm. So in the warp tour world, um, yeah, female musicians aren't really. I think well, it's I actually think, very I think, accepted. I think it's definitely and, coming up. It's, it's a growing thing. Yeah, yeah. Good, good, good way to put it. All right. Naomi Trepanier. <laughs> Do we love her name? No, I'm just, I just, I'm so bad at pronouncing things. Let's do it again. Ah, Trepanier. Why don't you say Naomi T? 
Naomi T, <laughs> what is everyone's favourite tour snack? Uh, I know. For me, I've got it down now. It, when we, whenever we have a freezer, it's frozen raspberries. Yeah. A lot of wasabi peas. Uh, candy of choice is Skittles. Skittles, yeah. We pretzels. get a lot of Skittles. Yeah, pretzels, pretzels and Pringles. Pretzels are great. Once you And probably Doritos, but I yeah. try not to have those. Jake's into his popcorn. Popcorn's yeah, great. Love smell, popcorn. Makes the bus smell great as well. <laughs> Lee oh, Norris. There's a lot of hot pockets uh, happening on the bus too. Yeah, a fair few hot pockets. <laughs> Lee Norris. On the last album, Amelia seemed to be a favourite track for a majority of people. Is there any reason why it was never released as a single? Uh, I guess. I guess we just didn't have uh, the right management, I guess, at the time. Um, uh, we kind of, in, in Australia, yeah. Uh, I think we were just confused about what we were trying to represent with the album. I mean, the singles that we put out from that record are all extremely different. I think we started and we finished with the right singles, but to be honest, in, in the middle, Let It Land, Starlight, I mean, I know that fans love those songs and stuff, but. I think we, we probably would have done things a little bit differently in hindsight, but again, that's not in a sense of regret. I think Amelia is a song that fans really connected to, and in that sense, it would have been great to give it more of a push and more of a lift and get more exposure for the song, but we maybe that's why it's so special, yeah. because it, it wasn't put in that kind of light. But I think that we were definitely, going back, we would definitely do it now, knowing, I guess, the things that we know and um, the band that we want to be. Yeah. yeah. I but think it's still cool though because we've got Amelia, we've got Thank You and Good Night. What are you so scared of that all weren't Was singles, singles but, but some are the still really too. popular. So it shows that people took the time to listen to the album. Yeah. And yeah. Nice. Alright, next. Jordan Bailey, what were some of our favourite bands growing up? Um, that's cool. I, I'm going to recall like a time of my life that where music was so important was when I guess Blink, Simple Plan, Good Charlotte, Fall Out Boy, Something Corporate, Sum 41, they were all the bands that I was leaning on like and they're all the bands that made me feel normal and um, I, I didn't really, there was definitely a point for me in high school where I did, definitely didn't fit in. I didn't know who I was or who I wanted to be friends with and I kind of floated around between a lot of different groups and I even tried to convince myself I liked rap music just so that I could fit in with a certain <laughs> kind of crowd. I didn't like it at all. So yeah, they were some of the bands that made sense of things for me. Yeah. Uh, was, yeah. Everyone knows your Again, Ruby Rose Thrice. Rose yeah. Um, yeah, Blink-22, obviously. <laughs> we'll go yours again. Uh, everyone knows. Uh, Thrice, Rufio, Blink-22. Used to listen to a lot of hardcore as well. August Men's Red, Atreyu, Parkway Drive. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, New Found Glory. Um, all my music was handed down to me by my brother. So I got introduced to it, like Mill and Colin and Area 7. But albums that I really lent on were every single Newfound Glory album, every single Yellow Card album, mm. uh, Rufio when Wack introduced me to it, um, Red Jumpsuit played a massive part in it, and then I got into stuff like Carnival, like Australian bands, Carnival and Cog, and um, Dead Letter Circus a little bit and stuff like that. Nice. Alright. Uh, Kaylee Koff. Goff? Goff. Goff. Go? It looks like Van Gogh. <coughs> <laughs> no. Kay Kaylee go. Goff. Go. Kaylee Goff. We'll go with that. Which songs do you feel connect you with the audience the most when you play them live? I think definitely Amelia. Amelia yeah. Listening, Listening, breaking and entering. Yeah. What are you so scared of? They're the songs that um, half the time I can literally just put my mic out and I. There's no need for me to sing because the crowd is much louder than I am. My favourite thing is always a good song live My favorite as well, nice from too, one yeah. of our first EPs. Um, yeah, do you want to take over? Sure. Okay, Meg Roper. It's my oh, turn. Yeah, oh yeah, it, it is Wax Turn. It is. It's Wax Turn. Meg Roper, what track, tracks, are you most excited for the fans to hear off the new album? Um, there's a couple. Here you go. I do I? Yeah. Well, no. it's not called that it's anymore. Called oh, shit. It's called oh, The Fire. Sorry. It's called The Fire. My bad. Um, 
It's, gonna, it's an awesome song live and it's got a cool, um, it's, it's cool everything. It's kind of jumpy. Yeah. I love it. It's got the riff. Um, like, I think it's got the lyrics for me and the beat. I don't know. No it's different? Just, it's just punchy. No different? No different. Yeah, that's definitely one of your favourites. Uh, <laughs> you rep that song. Um, every song, I really enjoy every song, but yeah, you go. Um, I think Complexes is one for me that I'm super proud of. And it came a long way. It had a lot of sort of stages in the writing process. Um, it just is very personal. It, it's like really based around the lyrics and then we've got this big bridge that's really like a moment in the album, I think. That's definitely my favourite moment, that bridge. Yeah, and then there's a the title track, The Other Side, which is another song that had a lot of transformations, but we're super proud of as well. Yeah. I'm just excited. <laughs> oh, don't even sing that. <laughs> I, um, I'm really excited for the whole album to come out. I, I hate releasing songs before the album comes out because I feel like it's just like part of a book. Mm. It's like the like first chapter. two chapters and then uh, nothing really. So I'm excited for the whole album to come out. Sorry, Meg. I, I know you asked what track. But... Thanks, guys, for sending your questions. Um, we're tonight live and you're on pure volume.